Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and this is MedPix video for case 14328. This is also a case of the week, and you can earn AMA Category 1 C credit. We have no significant financial nor other conflict of interest disclosures. This case was contributed by Stephen J. Goldstein from the University of Kentucky. We have a 44-year-old woman with symptoms of sinusitis who was evaluated by CT in January. The bone window image demonstrates the sphenoid sinus with mucosal thickening and homogeneous opacification of the sphenoid sinus with slightly convex margins. So we have evidence of recurrent or chronic sinusitis as well as a fluid-filled sinus. The sphenoid sinus is the third to pneumatize. The frontal is usually the last and does not always become aerated. About 80% of the sphenoid will have a septation and 20% will have two septations. The opening of the sphenoid sinus is into the posterior nasal cavity just above the coena in the sphenoethmoidal recess usually medial to the superior nasal turbinate. Common lesions of the sphenoid sinus include sinusitis as well as extension of pituitary adenomas, chordomas, inverting papilloma, metastatic disease, and lymphoma. This lesion is a homogeneous fluid-filled sinus cavity. Is this a mucus retention cyst or is it a mucosal? This is a very common confusing question. A mucus retention cyst is obstruction of a single paranasal sinus gland with retained secretions. The prevalence is a little bit less than 10% on panoramic dental films, but up to 50% on CT scans done for orbit or sinus symptoms. Most mucus retention cysts are asymptomatic and spontaneously regress. They are typically lined by respiratory epithelium which may become modified. They are most common in the maxillary sinus and least common in the sphenoid sinus. As an example, here is an asymptomatic maxillary sinus mucus retention cyst. We can see that the lesion is relatively homogeneous and water-like in its attenuation. We can see that the sinus cavity is not remodeled and retains its normal shape. In the coronal image, including bone windows, we can see the classic dome-shaped appearance of the upper margin of the mucus retention cyst. And again, there is no bony remodeling. Mucus retention cysts are most common in the maxillary antrum, and they are very prevalent, and they have been observed to appear and resolve without therapy. When they do become symptomatic, the options should include watchful waiting as well as treatment for the underlying sinusitis. So our patient actually has a mucus seal. A mucus seal is a true cyst lined by epithelium and containing mucus secretions. The sinus ostium is obstructed and the sinus cavity cannot drain. This results in secondary expansion of the sinus cavity with bony remodeling. The histology is often nonspecific because of the chronic nature of the obstructed sinus ostium. The most common location for a mucosal is in the frontal sinus and the least common location is in the sphenoid sinus. The sphenoid represents less than 10% of all mucosals. Now our patient returned for a follow-up visit in August because of worsening symptoms. And now we can see that there has been a change. We can see the sinus cavity is now enlarged further. There is high attenuation material accumulated within the sinus cavity. And we have lost part of the bony margin in the left middle cranial fossa in the area of the cavernous sinus. On the sagittal image, we can see the mass, homogeneous fluid signal. We can see the inferior, the middle, and the superior nasal turbinate. And just as a reminder, this is the location for the sphenoid sinus ostium just uh, medial to the superior nasal turbinate. Our patient has now a new efferent pupillary defect in left eye. If we carefully compare the original image in January, we can see the bone margin. But if we look at the current image from August, the mass has now expanded and we have lost the bony detail of the lateral margin on the left side. If we look more carefully at the MR, which we have already seen, we can see the mass with fluid signal. We can also see the internal carotid flow void in the cavernous sinus, a normal appearance on the right side, but we do not see a corresponding 
carotid flow void on the left side, and we have lost the sclerotic bone margin. Now the differential diagnosis would include, in addition to mucosal, fibrous dysplasia, inverting papilloma, squamous carcinoma, invasive pituitary adenoma, chordoma, and metastatic disease for a lesion involving the sphenoid bone. However, in our case, the case is homogeneous and it was surgically treated with drainage of the mucosal. So again, this has been a case of a sphenoid sinus mucosal complicated by enlargement and erosion and skull vase in invasion involving the cavernous sinus. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos and I approve this message.